Today we learned that Tiger Woods had ankle surgery on his right ankle and the specific type of surgery that he had is known as a subtalar fusion. This subtalar fusion was performed because he was dealing with some post-traumatic arthritis from that car accident he had in February of 2021 that resulted in many injuries, but one of them was known as a fractured talus. We had seen that recently Tiger Woods had a very noticeable limp on that right leg and that is just due to that history of trauma to that area. A lot of times what happens with these fusions is that with a person that has some sort of injury along these lines, they're going to try non-surgical treatments as much as possible. And then finally, when things are no longer working, they're gonna go the fusion route. Since some people may not be too familiar with this section of the ankle, including the subtalar joint, the talus, and what is involved with a subtalar joint fusion, I'm going to go ahead and focus on that with this video. Welcome sports fans. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And with my channel, I go over sports injuries and I try to make them a little bit easier to understand. I also talk about what physical physical therapy's role is going to play in these injuries. If you like today's video and you find it informative, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the section below. Now we know that Tiger Woods had this most recent surgery due to post-traumatic arthritis from that prior talus fracture. So I wanna go ahead and show you where the talus is and why it's significant. So if we take a look at this model right here, we can see that obviously we have the foot and the ankle joint, which is right in here. Now the top of the ankle joint, you have your tibia bone, which is right here. This is the bone often associated with as being the shin. And to the side here, we have a bone known as the fibula. And directly those two bones, we see this one right here, and that is in fact the talus bone. So the talus bone makes up a significant part of the ankle joint. Now, as we go below the talus, this is where we find that subtalar joint. It's called subtalar because sub meaning below the talus and joint because it's the union of the calcaneus bone, which is our heel bone with that talus. So this is the joint where those two bones are going to come together. And this joint is very significant in the fact that if somebody needs to walk on an uneven surface or anything that requires a lot of dynamic stability in the ankle, you're going to see motion going through that joint. So anything going side to side. So two motions at the ankle that the subtalar joint plays a major role in are inversion where the foot is coming in this direction and eversion where the foot is coming out that direction. Now you can see why this is significant for Tiger Woods because he is a right-handed golfer. This is the foot that is planted behind him. So as he swings a golf club, this foot is going to have to go through a lot of rotation and it needs that stability to go through that. So any prior traumatic fracture to the talus bone is going to have major implications in that joint's ability to perform this motion. And of course, simple things like walking on uneven ground. There's a lot of times in golf where you're standing on uneven surfaces and maybe they're slick, maybe they give a little more, maybe they're more firm. It really depends on the conditions of the course for that day. So if somebody is dealing with any sort of arthritis located in that subtalar joint, any uneven surface, any twisting, any torque going through that is going to be extremely painful. And we saw this with Woods recently. Even simply walking seemed to be very painful for him. Now let's go ahead and talk about the surgery that he just had, which is that fusion of the subtalar joint. Anytime you hear that a person is going to be getting a fusion of a joint, essentially what they're going to be having is they're going to be having hardware inserted to prevent that joint from moving pretty much at all. So in the case of a subtalar joint, what the surgeon generally is going to do is they'll take a screw or a piece of hardware, they'll put it up through the calcaneus and coming into that talus bone, which is going to provide more stability for that subtalar joint. A lot of times the surgery is going to be indicated if that joint just is simply very unstable, which in Tiger Woods case, that's probably what he's dealing with at this stage because he does have a history of the traumatic fracture and that joint probably just is not as strong as it used to be. Now let's go ahead and talk about recovery time and a physical therapist's role for this type of an injury. So anytime we see somebody with this, we absolutely contact the surgeon because we wanna see where that person is in terms of their recovery and how the surgery went because none of these are the exact same. It really depends on a case by case basis. But generally speaking, what's going to happen is this person is going to be in a boot for at least eight weeks. 
and it can be longer than this. It really just depends on how the person's x-rays are looking and when the surgeon is comfortable with that person putting some weight through that foot. Then once that person has been cleared by the surgeon to finally start putting weight through that foot, what we do is something known as partial weight bearing. And this can be broken down in a percentage, whether it be about 50% weight bearing or 25% weight bearing. A lot of times a person is just not going to go right back into full weight bearing, especially with an injury as complicated as, as this. So they're going to begin partial weight bearing after that at least eight week stage. And then from there, we're going to work on range of motion. So the most important things we wanna get in the ankle is we wanna make sure that that ankle is moving as well as it can. With something like this, because there is a fusion, we expect the person to have some limitations in that inversion and eversion range of motion, solely because now that that joint does have the fusion. However, we're trying to restore as much as possible. Then once that person has as much range of motion as they're going to get, we're gonna to start to work in some strengthening exercises. And then these are going to be progressed about the three month mark is when we can start to work in a lot more progressive strengthening, whether that be some sport specific movements, full weight bearing, things along those lines. So it really depends on how this person is doing in terms of their recovery. They're going to have several images to make sure that the bones are healing properly and that everything's in a good alignment. And finally, once everything is said and done, then they get the clear to go and do what they like to do prior. So it really is going to be a long road ahead for Tiger Woods, unfortunately, because this is a tougher recovery and it's just really going to depend on how the surgeon feels like he's doing, how the physical therapist feels like he's doing. So we're gonna to have to wait and see some more specific details to get an accurate timetable, but it looks like as of right now, he's going to be out for at least that three month mark just to allow everything to heal. If I happen to hear any updates regarding Tiger Woods' condition, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comments section. Also, if you happen to hear anything, please feel free to update me as well. And that's it as of right now regarding Tiger Woods' most recent subtalar joint fusion. I wish him the best moving forward. This is a tougher surgery to come back from and I've seen this in the clinic, it does take some time. It really just depends on the person. But I think with him, with his work ethic and his motivation to return, he was able to come back from that car wreck already and play at a very high level. So. I really wish them the best of luck moving forward. Once again, I appreciate you for watching today. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content like this. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.